Hey guys, welcome back. This is Maruti and I'm back with the part two of retrieval augmented generation. For your kind of information, we are actually learning how we can use our own data with our GPT based LLM models. If you have not seen the part one of this video, I strongly recommend you to check that thing in the same YouTube channel. Let me give you a precap what we have exactly done here. So if you check right now, we have created one new project in Azure AI Foundry. And then we have configured uh, two different GPT models here. So we have used GPT-35 Turbo and we have used Text Embedding EDA-002. These two models are actually useful in this particular lab because first model, which is GPT model, is going to connect with your data. And then when it's connecting with your data, it's going to use Azure AI search service, which is going to configure index for you. And then creating this index is actually done by your EDA model, which is for text embedding. Now, if you have gone through the video, I'm sure you understood what we have done. We have actually used our own data. And when we ask for some travel related information, like where can we stay in New York, it's actually giving me an information which is coming from my own data, which is provided by this Margie's travel kind of a brochures. Same way, let's say if I ask a question that, uh, where can I stay in Dubai? Now I have some kind of a brochure for Dubai also in that. And that's the reason when I ask this question, it's going to again go through the documents, it's going to use that indexer, and based on that, it's going to give me the response, which is going to be associated with the same Margit Travels document. So this is what exactly we have done. You can see it's showing me that these are the options which you can try in the Dubai. It's also showing me that uh, three different hotels are there and then I can go for a booking to magistravel.com and it's showing me a reference document which is dubaibrochure.pdf. Now obviously this is reading from my six different brochures which I have uploaded as a document as my own data in this one. Now let's get started with the next step because this is not done. We have to make sure that this is going to be improvised with the help of prompt flow. So that is what we are going to do next right now. Now, the next thing which I'm going to do is I under the build and customize section, I have a section called prompt flow. So I'm going to click on prompt flow. I do not have any prompt flow in this particular project right now. I'm going to create a new prompt flow. By the way, if you're not familiar with prompt flow, I strongly recommend you to check out this video, which is actually giving you what is prompt flow and how you can use it in Azure AI Foundry portal. Check out that video first, and then you can continue with this one. I'm going to click on create. It's showing me that I can choose from the type wise flows which are available here, or I can choose from the gallery option which is available here. I am going to choose this one which is multi round QA on your data. So remember, this is something which is on my data. That's the reason I'm choosing this prompt flow. I'm going to click on clone. It's showing me that, okay, your folder name is going to be multi round QA on your data. Now, I just actually want to give a proper meaningful name. So I know it's a multi-round Q&A, but I'm going to give a name of this flow, brochure flow. So this is my prompt flow for my own data. I'm going to click on clone. Now, when we do this thing, this is a very common issue which happens every single time. Now, there are two different solutions of this. I have shown you one solution which was covered in the previous video where you just wait for 10 minutes and then it's going to be resolved automatically. The second solution is you have to assign this kind of a permission access manually. Now we are going to see this here that how we can actually do it manually. So I'm going into my Azure portal and I'm going into my resource group where I have all the services. I am going to click on my AI service. So this is my Azure AI service. And the first thing which I have to do is I have to configure identity for my Azure AI service. So I have to configure identity in this particular service. You can see in the identity section, this is showing me that system assign identity is off. I have to turn this on so that I can have a unique identity of this particular service. I'm saying yes. This process will take few seconds. It's successfully done. It's showing me a new unique object ID, which is created for this particular identity. I'm going to copy this and then I will go back to my resource group. I'll go into that storage account and under the storage account, I have to click on access control IAM. 
This is basically a role-based access control mechanism of Azure Cloud, where you can give particular permissions to a user's identity or a service identity. I am going to use the manage identity of my Azure AI service, so I will click on Add Role Assignment. In the Job Function roles, I'm going to search for the role Storage Blob Data Reader. This is the role which I want to assign, so I'm selecting this, clicking Next. And in the member section, I'm going to click on manage identity, select member, and I'm going to select my manage identity, which is my AI service. So I'm going to select all system assigned manage identities. And in this, we have my Azure AI Maruti RAG hub kind of a service, which is available here. And this is my Maruti RAG service, which is a different one. So which one you want to associate here you have to check this thing remember when you are doing this thing the advisable thing is you put that particular id now if it is searching for that id you will be able to find that thing easily otherwise just remember the id is d47 something something is there i'm going to remove this and from the available services i'm going to select my ai service so i'm going to select my rag8043 service i'm going to click on select and you can see this is actually showing me that this is my Azure AI project. Now, same way, if I choose select member, all system assigned uh, services is actually having one Azure AI service. And in the service, if I select my service, and if I click on select, this is the one which is actually that object ID which I've created. So remember, in my case, this was my object ID. You can see it is totally connected with this one. This is my AI service and this is my AI project. So please do not make this mistake. Do not choose your project or a hub specific ID here. You choose that AI service ID. So I'm just choosing that one, which is this one. And then I'm going to click on next. Conditions I do not want to give. So that is perfectly fine. Review plus assign and review plus assign. This assignment will be done and it may be going to take two to three minutes to work. So maybe it's going to just provision that configuration. Role assignment is successfully done. I need to go back to my Azure AI Foundry portal and I need to try this once again. So I'm going to click on clone. This time when I do this thing, it's showing me folder name is already there. I'll just change the name of the flow to brochure flow one and I'll click on clone. It's processing. And I think this time it will work because permissions are successfully done. Okay, my prompt flow is successfully loaded. The first thing which I want you to observe is this graph. You can see in the right side one, this is not a very simple prompt flow. It is starting with some inputs. Then you have multiple nodes inside this. Some of the nodes are associated with your LLM. Some of the nodes are doing some kind of a lookup. Then you have a node which is allowing you to write some kind of a Python code in that. And then you also have certain things for prompt variants and chat with the context. This is a prompt flow graph, which is showing you the step-by-step -step process, what exactly you're going to do in this logical workflow. Now, also in the left side, if you just check, you are going to have these nodes available with the logical code. Like this is going to modify query with the history and we have some logical code given inside that configuration. So what is the system message we want to give? What kind of a chat history we want to associate? And then what kind of an input we are looking for is all configured here. Remember, because of this configurations only, this is going to connect with the other options. So you can see all these blue lines which are showing you the connected options is actually here because of the configuration which you have done in the prompt flow. As of now, before I do anything here, I am going to click on start compute session, which is actually going to start a serverless compute session for this prompt flow. This can take some time, but I need that compute session because without that, I won't be able to modify my prompt flow. So let's wait for one to three minutes, which they are showing you here. That it will take around one to three minutes to start the session. Just wait for the session to start. Once you're getting a green tick here, then you can proceed to the next step. Okay, so now our compute session is actually successfully running. So this means that we can proceed. What I want you to see right now is we have multiple nodes here. The first part here is actually showing you inputs. We have two inputs, chat history and chat input. Basically, the text which you're going to provide when you're chatting with your chatbot. Then we have outputs, which is having chat underscore output kind of a variable. The value of that will be chat with context dot output. I do not want to change anything in my input and output, but 
we want to do some kind of a configuration with my uh, next node, which is actually going to associate with my LLM. In this case, you can see this is modify query with history. I want to make sure that in this connection section, I want to connect with my Azure AI service. So I'm going to select my Azure AI service connection. The API will be chat. The deployment name is going to be my GPT-35 Turbo 16K. Temperature is zero by default, which is fine. I do not want to change it. Max token, everything else is fine. In the response format, we want to change that type is actually text because we are going to provide text kind of a data. This is perfectly fine. This is the first configurational change which we have done in this node. I do not want to change anything in the prompt section. So this is all fine. Uh, it's configured properly. We'll scroll down and now we are moving forward to lookup section. In the lookup section, we have ML index content, which is of type string. In the value of this, I want to choose my index type which is going to be registered index. And then in the asset ID, I'm going to choose my brochure index, which I have created. This is my brochures index one. And we'll click on save. Queries are fine. Uh, query type, I want to change to hybrid vector plus keyword. And the top K is going to be two, which is perfectly fine. So these are the two changes which we have done in the lookup section. Next, we are scrolling down to generate prompt context. In this, we have to make sure that this particular input section is having search result, which is actually having value lookup.output. This is perfectly fine. We don't need to change anything here. In the prompt variant also, if you check, we have a context which is associated with our prompt context. Uh, then we have chat history and chat input, which is going to be associated with our input chat history and the input. So this is also all good. We don't need to change anything in this. So this is also all good. We don't need to do any modification here. In the chat with the context, we have to set our collection. So we are going to change the connection to our Azure AI service. API is still going to be chat. The deployment name is going to be GPT-35 Turbo 16K. And type we are going to change to text. So the response format is going to be type text. In the inputs of this particular section, we have prompt text, which is having a value prompt variance dot output, which is having a value prompt variance dot output, which is perfectly fine. If all things look good, I think it's going to work. So let's do the save first. Do not forget to click on the save button. This is saved successfully. And now let's do one thing. Let's click on this chat section, which is on the right top corner. This is going to come up with some preloaded chat i do not want to focus on this so this is perfectly fine i'll just uh, close this panel i'll get rid of this particular message which is by default coming and and i'm going to put my own prompt which is where can i stay in london when i submit this prompt it's going to give me a result completion result is generated and you can see that this time also this is giving me the response based on my own data is showing me the related information of London with Margis Travel, and then it's also showing me the Margis Travel website. This execution worked very well. Not only that, it's actually going to be a multi ten conversation. So exactly after this asking a question that where can I stay in London, if I ask uh, another following question, like what can I do there? If I put this, if I put this, this is going to be smart enough to understand that I'm talking about London only. And with respect to that London's location is going to give me what kind of things I can do in London. You can see they are showing me a result in London. There are numerous activities and attractions to enjoy. And they are showing me some of the options of those activities and attractions. Now, this is actually remembering my previous question and what I have asked there. And it's also able to relate with that and is giving me the next answer associated with that. This is something which we have achieved with the help of this prompt flow, because this is going to be taking care of multiple question and answer kind of a flow with that. Now, if you're all good with this, if you're happy with this prompt flow, the next thing which you have to do is you have to click on this deploy button. I'm going to click on deploy and I want to deploy my brochure flow. So this is going to be the name of the endpoint. They are saying Maruti RAG with some kind of a number, which is fine. The deployment name is also fine. Uh, the virtual machine, which is going to be associated with this, it's standard D2 ASV4, something like that. And I just want one instance count with that. I'm okay with the default configuration. If somehow, if I get an issue because of my virtual machine quota, then I'll change the size of this later on. 
but as of now i'm fine with this i'll click on next in the advanced settings i do not want to change anything related to authentication type or some other network access related things so all i'm going to do is review plus create this deployment is going to be created right now it's going to have my llm associated with that and this is going to take some time so just wait for some time click on the notification bell icon on this particular portal and then you can see that it's just going to show me here if it is done or not so it's just showing me that my endpoint and my deployment of this particular prompt flow is going on now this will take some time but while this is taking the time i should remind you that when you're clicking on this notification bell icon why don't you click on the notification bell icon of this youtube channel because that's going to make sure that whenever we create a new videos you'll get a notification also do not forget to subscribe to this particular channel. Please click on the subscribe button so that you will be connected with us always. Okay, so I waited for some time and you can see I'm getting an error right now as expected. I do not have enough quota available in my subscription. So it's just showing me that uh, not enough cluster CPU quota available for your particular region. Now, obviously I have to go and delete some of the clusters and then I can create a new one. And then if I do that thing, it's going to work. It's going to work fine and it's going to deploy this one. But uh, yeah, I'm not stretching this video for that particular deployment. You know how to deploy a model. You know how to take care of the prompt flow deployment because we have done this thing in other videos also. So I'm not doing that thing right now. I hope you understood the changes which we have done inside the prompt flow. And anyhow, right now, I know that this is going to work fine because we have checked this thing in this internal chat. So the only thing which is remaining now is the deployment of this particular prompt flow. And that's something which we are not doing in this video. I hope you understood this. Thank you so much. And I'll see you tomorrow with another dose of Azure AI. Thank you.